Pablo for breakfast. I'm confused because the topic we're talking about today is pretty incredible. Qantas powering an aeroplane with cooking oil. Say it ain't so. It is so. It is so. Back in April of 2012, Qantas powered a flight between Sydney and Adelaide and then another one between Melbourne and Hobart using... Uh, refined cooking oil. Now, it wasn't the, it wasn't every single engine, and it wasn't only cooking oil. They did have to mix a portion of fuel in, but it was part of their program to see if they could find a more sustainable way of mm. flying. Yes. Yeah, so when you when you think about say your standard Boeing seven four seven, a normal big aeroplane, uh, it uses about a gallon, which is roughly four liters of fuel every single second. So in a 10-hour flight, say an international flight, we're talking about well over 150,000 litres of fuel, and that's a lot of carbon emissions. So Qantas and the Australian government at the time decided that they would run a pilot program and just see how it would go. Now, I'm not saying they would see how it would go as if the plane would stay in the air. They knew the plane was going to stay in the air. (laughs) Oh, we'll just see how this goes. Um, But they wanted to see how sustainable it was going to be, how accessible this kind of fuel is. And as it turned out, uh, kind of not very accessible. They had to import this, what they call is biofuel. They had to import this cooking oil from America. It can't be any old cooking oil. You can't just go to Macca's and be like, hey, what are you doing with the vat of oil that you make your fries in? You know, it's not quite the same. <laughs> but it's it's not too far different. They do have to refine it, get out all of the gunk, and then it, it kind of works. And there's been examples of cars that are powered by vegetable oil um, since, and a number of other airlines piloting this. But Qantas was the first airline in Australia to do it, and they did at the time have a a sort of net zero carbon emission target by 2020. But of course, um, you know, our focus in 2020 was on other global Mm -hmm. issues. So that has sort of been put on the back burner a little bit. But it's such an interesting thing to see the direction that the world is probably going to take with carbon emissions and where we can source other uh, forms of fuel. Because, you know, flights happen even through the pandemic. Flying was reduced hugely, but it still happened quite regularly because you've got to get freight around, you've got to move stock and um, and mail and all, it's not just passengers. Uh, so it's something that we're stuck with, I think, and cooking oil might be the solution. <laughs> now, last week, I sort of gave you a question on notice because my daughter uh, asked me the last week around the kitchen table, why are tortoises so slow? And I, we talked about mm. it on air and the, the main reason we sort of said is, well, they've got tiny little strong legs and they've got a heavy mm-hmm. shell. You've done the research. Is it mm-hmm. right? Is that the reason? It is right. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, Charlotte, I should be taking over my segment soon. (laughs) She is absolutely right. A tortoise shell um, can weigh up to 12 kilos, which is very heavy. Yep, very, very heavy. So because of that, they are simply unable to move very fast at all. Now, this isn't a problem for them because they don't hunt and chase their prey, they're herbivores. So grass just grows where grass grows and the tortoise can just mosey on up to it at any speed it likes uh, and then the grass isn't going to run away, nor are the leaves or the trees or the plants. So speed is not a huge issue for them. But I did find out, interestingly, the tortoise shell is actually made up of 60 interconnecting bones. It's all made of bones. And then they've got these outer scales, like on the outside of the shell, which are made up of keratin, which is the same thing as our fingers are made, made up of tabloids. Yeah. So that's super interesting. And they've got feeling in their shell as well. If you scratch a tortoise on his little shell, um, they'll feel it. They, they will feel it. They're not, they're, they're not sort of without nerve endings. They, they do have some sense in there as well. But no, mainly an 11 kilo shell uh, on a Galapagos tortoise or anything from sort of two kilos on on a little baby tortoise is, is pretty heavy, so they can't move that fast at all. Well, we have solved that problem, and I'll go mm-hmm. back and report that info to Charlotte tonight. I'm sure she'll be very happy to know. Uh, and, of course, in a nutshell, Australia, keep up to date with Eliza on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll chat next week. Thanks, Pablo. Pablo for breakfast. Yeah.